What is good friends? We are back with more OUPL. And we have Latna with ADF test here. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, this should be the all. Okay, she brought uh, or he, I don't not 100 percent sure. I think it's a she. Um brought Mega Sableye. Uh, Volcarona semi stole by um NJ and P. It's a sample team, but I can um, imagine that some changes were made to the team. And the opponent has Latna has <coughs> some nice bulky offense. The move is either on Majorna or Tapu Bulu. Scarf is probably on Nihiligo, but yeah, the Dagi is really annoying because <coughs> like Nihiligo doesn't do much this game. And the Dagi is also annoying because if the Nihiligo locks. Like if it's Scarf rocks in the Heligo for example and locks into the wrong move. <coughs> it locks into rocks, Dagi can come in and trap it, but like Dagi doesn't even have to trap Nihiligo. Just Nihiligo just doesn't do anything in this game. It gets walled by Toxabax. It gets walled by Tangros if it's choice locked. Like if it's Z Thunder, it can maybe do damage to Toxapax, but I don't see it breaking the team. And yeah, I assume this is If it's a Dragon and Zard. I assume it is not that set, but if it is a Dragon and Zard, I would assume that we would see a Zard lead here on the Sableye Protect so that Latna can get off a Dragon Dance. But yeah, I assume it's. Actually, it has to be Avi Majorna, I think, looking at the team. Avi Majorna, and then. Either Scarf, Rox, and Hiligo, or Rox, Lando. And then the Bulu is potentially the stall breaker with uh, sub SD or with uh, just all out attacking. But yeah, the Majorna lead, so this is, might be um, probably just a Volt Switch coming out here. Floor is on a Protect, but yeah, the next turn he's probably gonna Volt Switch. Um, the Tangros slash Toxapex is pretty obvious here. So originally this team had Eject Button Toxapex. But hard Volcarona on a Volt Switch, interesting. I mean, if you go Toxapex there and you lose the Eject Button, I can understand why you would want to keep the Eject Button. Because if the Nihiligo ever attacks the Pex, you can trap that, or even not, not even that, Nihiligo is not the problem, like I said. You can just keep your Eject Button for checking like Zard. Like if Zard Mega evolves and it's Zard X and it attacks the Toxic Packs and Dagi has its Sash attack, they can always like revenge it. Yeah, I hope my voice is getting picked up. Let me actually check real quick. It should be getting picked up. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I changed recording programs again because I had issues with OBS. I already explained that in my last upload. So we're gonna see Zard Y or um yeah the Zard come out here. If not the Zard, I would have like Nihiligo, like I said, this doesn't pressure the opposing team, so I don't think that's worth the play. Scarf's Donage Bulu was an option, but this ju that just gets walled by Skarmory, so I don't really see the point in going to that. And I also don't think it's Scarf Bulu, like I said earlier. So obviously Defog Tabu Fini, um it would be interesting to see if it's Haze Fini just in general, because Baton Pass is not banned yet, so people can like prepare for Baton Pass. <clears throat> I don't really see how Letna. Depending on the. on Letna's sets, like. The Bulu has to be like his breaker. Like, I don't see the Zard breaking this team at all. Yeah, he doubles out into Bulu, breaking the packs, I assume. And now he can potentially get up a substitute. Because this packs runs um, T spikes are toxic, Scald, Recover, and Haze. And if this is a sub SD Bulu, that will be a kind of threatening. If it has Leech Seed. Actually, Leech Seed and sub SD, it do I don't think it has that many options. It doesn't have that many move slots. Sub SD does run two attacks. But yeah, if it's the. <laughs> If it's Leech Seed, I can break the Skarmory sturdy and SD up. I know the Skarmory is Stealth Rock, Roost, Defog, and then... I don't know the last move. 
Oh, the 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 the, the duck trio might be Ariel Ace on this team to check Heracross. Um, but maybe the scum is brave, but two to check the Heracross because Ariel Ace doesn't kill Heracross. But yeah, this substitute I was assuming was substitute Bulu, the way he brought it in on the Toxic packs. I don't know if it's sub seed, I think it's sub it could be sub C two attacks, it could be sub SD two attacks, it could be sub three attacks. But yeah, you have to scout for the Stone Edge here and go into Skumri. Don't wanna uh, sack your Volcarona. Let me actually close my Discord to prevent any potential lag, because I know my computer isn't the best. They're like, Latina is thinking here, so maybe he will make an uh, aggressive play, but okay. That was a bit risky by um, ADF staying in and going for flamethrower if that Bulu had stone edge. The Volcarona would have gotten cooked there, and yeah, gets the, the crit kind of sucks. But it's not like the Zard breaks the team, like I said. The Toxapex is going to come back out here, and uh, the Zard just roosts up. He doesn't want to Mega Evolve, which is to play some mind games, not one is showing... Not wanting to show if he's X or Y. Also, if he's X, you don't want to Mega Evolve, so so you don't get trapped by Dark Trio. Hmm. I think the yeah, okay. Tabu Fini to get up the Mystic Terrain to predict a potential Toxic, a Defog, a T Spike away, or just don't take any damage from Skull. And I can see that Tabu Bulu actually Tabu Bulu would set, change the terrain. Never mind. Hmm. Matches madness. Okay, that's not gonna do much because like Tangros has regenerators, so like Tabufini doesn't break Tangros ever. Unless you get like hazards um, like spikes and rocks. And Ladna only has rocks, he doesn't have spikes, and it's also hard to get up because there's a Sableye and a Skarmory. Like his rock has either Nihiligo or Landorus, I assume it's Landorus. And since the Bulu Shot substitute, I think that's his potential. Like that's his main way of breaking the team, but like the Volcarona stand stands in the way of breaking but stone edge bulu is not that uncommon so i really don't know if i agree with like risking the volcarona on the bulu that was wild dude like maybe that was weird i mean it worked out if you go skarmory down the sd that would have been super bad for adf so i can understand the play but like okay that was potentially risky because some Tangros carry sometimes rock sled, but this team is probably known from the forums, but like you can always change some sets up. I do like rock sled a lot on Tangros because people like to go hard into their Zard Wyth or their Volcoronas, but ever since Mega Mobile came out, I prefer Earthquake a little bit more. But in general, rock sled is an option on Tangros, especially if you have another knockoff user already, you can run knock, um, instead of knockoff, you can run uh, rock sled on Tangros too and also have Earthquake. Yeah, since the PAX is so obvious, I assume we're gonna see some sort of double double again, exactly. And yeah, this Landris is... I don't think it would be Substitute 2, so... I think you would just... If it's Smackdown Landris with Earthplate, this is like a nice stall breaker, but... Like I said, Bulu is probably the main breaker. That would... Bulu would put in so much work if the Volcona wasn't there. Because it's like, obviously not Stone Age Bulu, obviously, otherwise he would have gone for it. Or he predicted, or he just has Stone Edge and he didn't want it to show it yet, and he just predicted the Scum reality. That makes sense too. Maybe he has Stone Edge and he just didn't show it yet. But Z Superpower, I think, is maybe a bit more common and like is the obvious option. But yeah, just Earthquake predicting this, um, the Sable Eye. You obviously don't want to go for Rocks, but the Scum was pretty obvious there. If he had Smackdown, it would have been super cool. But yeah, this is just offensive standard Landris, and this um, has to be Shetchill Skarmory to prevent getting trapped from Magnazone. Tapu Fini um, can just defog the rocks away here, but... Hmm. Yeah, I also went Tapu Fini there, predicting potential Toxic. You never know if this Skarmory was changed to Toxic, but it's rocks defog. Roost, and then it's either Brave Bird, Counter, I think it's Counter, I'm not really sure. But yeah, gets off the knock of the landers. So like, Latin's team is like slowly getting chipped. He has to like play aggressive to have a chance, but it's gonna be hard for him. I think he has to U-turn here. Also, he has to get the turn correct where 
the Sableye doesn't come out and go for rocks on that turn. Uh, but the thing is, the Skarmory is gonna come out on the turn that the Sableye doesn't come out probably if he goes for rocks. So then that's just gonna be a defog again. So like, it's so hard to get rocks up for that now. Go Sableye this time, and yeah, nice u turn play there. As that was the right play for sure. You definitely don't want to go for rocks there. And yeah, I think he's just gonna hard volt switch here. But it's just so annoying. There's always the duck trio option in the background, but most of the time you don't go hard duggy if you are the if you are the stall player. You want to play safe. It's like semi stall. It's not full stall. But yeah, this is a bulky war corona, so it's a pretty cool win condition. I like. I do like this team, but. Not really a fan if the battle takes that long, and like, Lena doesn't really have the best options to break this team. The best tools is the, the correct term that I should use. Like, I don't really see what he can go out into. He can go Zard here, but Zard, like, Zard and Nihiligo are like his only plays. And both get like walled by packs, depending on the set. And if they don't get walled by Pex, they can get trapped by Doggy if it's Art X. Um, so we can't Mega Wolf, it's just a bit tough for Lena. But yeah, this is the first game I was able to catch today. And the game I most had for Spooky TCG Gamer was uh, tricking because he got subbed in. Yeah, doubled out into Zard on the, on the obvious Toxic Packs. But I thought so far the Zard gets walled by Pex. But. Yeah, this is just gonna take forever, man. Like, <laughs> he switched the Zard out early on the packs, so I, if I recall correctly, so I don't think the Zard can touch the packs. And they just mad anything there, and if you... So you have to go into Zard here, I guess, and then you have to go into Heligo again. So you you have to go into Heligo again before you go into Tapu Bulu or Tapu Fini, so you can get rid of the T-Spikes. If Misty Terrain is up, you shouldn't get poisoned, but Misty Terrain ends soon. Oh, he goes hard in the Heligo. That was, that was not the play, dude. That was not the play. What? That was pretty obvious. I mean, like I said, I don't think it matters, because, like, Lentner doesn't really have the tools to break the opposing team if he's not... Besides the Tapu Bulu that can potentially put him work. I think you have to go Tapu Bulu here, set up a substitute. If he has Stone Edge, he can... Kill the Volcarona if ADF goes to Volcarona again. That's like his only way of breaking the breaking the core somewhat. Like and like besides the Bulu, I don't really see how he can put him work. The Zard is just kept in check with eject button packs into Dougie, even if it even if it's X. Uh, I'm not sure if this Dougie has Edge by the way. I think it's Toxic Earthquake Reversal, and then it's either Pursued. I think it has to be Pursued. To check Merorak and stuff, like so Merorak can't switch out. Like you, so you do a good chunk of damage to Merorak. But yeah, like I don't think that was the play going hard in Heligo there, cause like the earthquake is obvious, and like like ADF doesn't lose anything from earthquaking. Um, maybe he banked on like like the I think he predicted a knockoff there to be honest, cause knockoff if he's choice scarf in Heligo. He would have gotten rid of his choice item. Then he gets outsped by Dougie that way, but he still like can change up moves at least. Hmm. That, I can understand he wanted to get rid of the T spikes, but that was not the turn to do it. He doubles out, breaks in the packs slash scummery, and now this Tapu Bulu set is in. This Tapu Bulu is in, and yeah, if he has the correct set, he can put in some work now, and if not, he can probably just forfeit, and that would be sad. Hmm. Yeah, I know this team has been getting spammed kind of last week. People brought it like two times. Um, not really the biggest fan of seeing the same team over and over again. Um, yeah, okay, setting up a T spike on Tap Bulu is. I mean, getting up a T spike is nice. To poison the Tap of Vini and chip at it, but if this Bulu has SD and. I think he's just gonna... IDF is just gonna spam Haze here, exactly. So, like, you cannot let this get up an SD. Hmm. I mean... Yeah, okay, that's the eject button. And now we will see if it's Stone Edge. 
I don't know why Skarmory is not the play though, because like if it's Stone Age Bulu, you... just show me the Stone Age, my man. I mean, I don't have anything against like if ADF wins, that's fine with me too. I know some people have want ADF to lose. I'm <clears throat> scumbags. Just kidding. I'm not gonna talk about that. I mean, if you bring stall, I don't want to say that you deserve to lose, but like, it's kind of like, it's kind of annoying to watch. Like, <laughs> you you guys know what I'm trying to say, right? It's not a game where I'm like on the edge of my seat, but yeah, scouting for the Z move. Um. Oh, Bloom Doom, okay. So it's Bloom Doom, gets a crit on the Tangros and Grassy Terrain that doesn't even do that much. So yeah, this Bulu cannot break the team. Volcarona probably walled, which is revealed now. Like, that was the second time the Volcarona was in on the Bulu behind the sub and he didn't go for Edge again. So like, I'm pretty sure this doesn't have Stone Edge. So yeah, that I can pretty much forfeit this. I don't see how he can win. That's disappointing. Um... Yeah, if he was like Stallbreaker Landers, he can put in some work with Smackdown and Earthblade Lando. Um, so he can potentially get up rocks, but he has to like still play perfectly. Um, like, if you Smackdown on the Skarmory, Tangos can come in on the Earthquake, so he would have to go for rocks on that turn. And if the Sableye comes out on that turn, that's also annoying as Flip. But the Sableye, Sableye probably wouldn't come out that turn, because like you don't want to risk that Sableye. But yeah, he's not that sad, so I don't know why I'm talking about that. Just. Trying to see how he could have won potentially. Like I don't see how the flamethrower is like pretty much obvious. He's coming out here, and Bulu. I don't think it has leech seed. Bloom Doom as the substitute. So it's, I assume that's like okay, horn leech. So I don't think he has wood hammer. Then I think the last move would either be superpower or that's so. <laughs> I don't know if it's not superpower. I thought it's Stone Edge, but it's not Stone Edge, he would have shown it by now. Unless he's playing its car his cards perfect and he's just hiding the Stone Edge. Yeah, she Yeah, yeah Pokédex G Gamma is playing versus tricking if I forgot to I think I like started the sentence early and forgot to finish it. He got subbed in for Top D Boy, I'm hyped for that match. And yeah, Ricardo, I hope Ricardo can play, but he I think he had to leave. Man, that sucks. I want to see Ricardo play. His opponent didn't respond and like he called for activity. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, goes on the Zard on the Flamethrower. <coughs> but yeah, now this time if he goes in the top of Fini, I think he will get poisoned. Like on the obvious Toxic Packs, he can't double into Fini and Defog because he will get poisoned. Uh, It's just a matter of time till Letna loses this, unless he somehow pulled it off with some wild Zard set. Like, Modus Zard Y can do a lot to Toxapex if it gets, like, especially if he gets a crit. Yeah, so, like, yeah, if Zard crits the packs and it's Zard Y, it can potentially win. But yeah, if it's X, he can basically never Mega Evolve or he will just get revenged by Dougie. Mm. That's kind of tough, man. You probably just go for Scald here if you if you. Okay, it is Zardex, so he says it's now or never. I'm going for game, and yeah, the haze is pretty obvious, so he has to attack here. We will see if he has Earthquake. But yeah, from 76%, Dactrio should probably pick off be able to pick off the Zard. So I don't see how he can win, like. Okay, he doesn't even have Earthquake, so the haze is gonna come out here and then the recover slash hard. I couldn't even see hard duck trio, unnecessary aggressive play. But yeah, just the recover. I mean, you don't even need the toxic packs at this point in time. If Pex dies, you revenge this. You revenge the Zard with a doggy. Like Letna, I think he just realized that he can't win and he's just. Like, yeah, it would have to be really bulky Zard spread to be able to live a hit from the Dougie at 76. 
<laughs> League said go light now. I mean, I don't think you can win. That's a bit... Like, at least I want to see a close game. Like, it sucks. Like, Pax is not needed for anything, like I said. Because, like, it only is nice to check Bulu, I guess. Tangors plus Volk walls pretty much the entire team. Besides Zarex, and Zarex gets trapped by Dagi. I might go for a Flare Blitz burn here if I'm Ladna. That's how I beat pa Toxic back with Zarex sometimes. I go for Flare Blitz burn and then I, then if they lose their Black Sludge, I mean this Pex doesn't have Black Sludge. Ooh. Went for Haze, they're breaking the DD, didn't go for Recover. But yeah, it doesn't matter, like I said. The Pex can just get sacked off and then Dougie will just come and revenge the Zard as the Sash intact, even if the Zard somehow lives a hit. Or if it gets off a DD. And this is just a kind of sad game, like, this makes me... <laughs> I don't want to say it kills my mood, but like... Like, I can understand that you, you come off the bench, you want to win, but... I mean, his opponent, Ladna, didn't prepare for this team, so IDF did a correct... Did the... Made the right choice in bringing it, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Say it that way, put it that way. But, like, I don't really know what to narrate here, like, this game is over. And yeah, I got my pizza here, I got my nice pizza here self-made. I'm kinda hungry and I'm just looking at this Toxapex spamming haze and I'm like, don't do this to me, <laughs> I wanna eat. <laughs> just finish this game, please. Now, I'm, like usually I'm pretty excited to bring you guys this, um, this coverage, but like, after I found out that the Bulu cannot put in work, like I pretty much didn't see a, win a way of Latin winning. Goes for a ruse there, which is a pretty cool play. Because now the Zard can actually live an earthquake from the Dagi, probably. But yeah, Dagi has the Sash and tagged. So it doesn't make a difference. Because he can just twit KO the Zard unless Flablitz burns. And if Flablitz. Flablitz recoil plus earthquake might also kill. Um, let me actually open the calculator because like there's not much going on, so. You got some time to run a call. Oh, I forgot this recording program sometimes doesn't look as clean if you open the second tab. But in general, this program is amazing. So, Charizard. Oh, you Dragon Dance versus a Duck Trio. Focus Sash Trapper. Earthquake does 83 to 98. So, yeah, Flabbit's Recur would kill the Zard, I'm pretty sure. Or at least it would be a roll in Dougie's favor. Like, it would be in Dougie's favor that Zard kills itself with Recur. Yeah, he has to try to get up his, um, to stall this out of hazes, and he has to get up a Dragon Dance. He has to get up a Dragon Dance and kill the packs at the same time. And then he has a potential chance to win, but it's gonna be tough. Because he only has 11 roosts left, but yeah, Haze still has 35 PP, and he only has 24 Dragon Dances, so I don't think he's gonna be able to do this. Yeah, I can see what ADF is doing, it's like checkmate position. So recover there. Doesn't really matter because if the Zard like attacks, you just go doggy and revenge it. And if the Zard goes for roost, you just wasted a roost of the Zard. Like, not the most interesting part, but I can see you still have to like somewhat use your brain here because you don't want to choke this away. Because if Zard kills this with a dragon, then it's up and it's at full. Dougie can't kill it, and Dragon Clock can 2 KO the Dougie. So yeah, if that would have crit, for example, that Dragon Claw, Latna could have potentially won. Cause like the Zard comes in later on, like something like Skarmory and heals. Might even heal on Volcarona. I give the crit. Yeah, he just needs the crit, and you can win. Yeah, I mean it's 
Pokemon is a game of odds, as Pokemon would say. Like, you have to go for it if you want to win. And it's a team tour, so I can understand that you go for it, I guess. Like, it's not over till it's over, so he's not forfeiting yet. I can understand it. But he's basically playing a losing game. He has to bank on his opponent messing up or on getting a crit. Props to you if you watch the entire thing. I know this is not super interesting to watch. Well, that's the Scald. So at that range, the Dagi kills the Zard 100%. So it's basically checkmate again now, and it only has a few Roos left. Yeah, nine Roos. And I assume the Haze is gonna come out here. Ah, nice water. Hmm. Yeah, the haze does come out. How many covers does the packs have left? Eight. So I assume we're gonna see a Roost slash Dragon from Ledna and a Recover slash Haze from the packs. Not really much to say here. <laughs> I would really love if you if you can speed this up a bit. But yeah, they're playing it out, I can understand it, like I said. Yeah, he's always going for the burn now. Doesn't get it. I can see him going for Blitz again to get the burn. Potentially. I think it's a 10% chance to get a burn with Flood Blitz. But yeah, the pack's back at full. And Haze is just too many PP. And Scald has more PP than a uh, Roost left also, so like... Just this little bit of damage on Zard always guarantees that Dagi kills it, so yeah. Yeah, this game is over. If you just keep clicking Scald here, you always guarantee that Dagi revenges the Zard. <sighs> wow, this is, has to be so painful for Latna, good lord. I'd be so salty now, uh, maybe not that salty, I'd just be like... <laughs> I don't want to play this game anymore is what I would say if I was on Latna's position. For a few hours at least. And I'd bring a juicy... St I just like, in general, in my opinion, if I would ever play a tournament... And I would try hard, like... I would try to get the win, or he gets a crit, it doesn't really matter. I would always pack at least... One to two mons that are really good versus stall. Because if you don't know what your opponent brings, sometimes you cannot find replays if it's like some... Like maybe it's someone that is not known in the Smogon community, so like... It's hard to find replays, some people... Like really just hide every replay, and they are not really known, so it's super tough to find one. So we just have to bring something that you like... Confident with, but... That still can beat every playstyle kind of. And like, obviously, you cannot bring something that gets fixed out by stall if you don't know what your opponent is gonna bring. Like, you have to at least bring one or two s mods that do pretty well versus stall. Like, a lead seed Bulu, shoutouts to Ricardo, I love that set. Maybe, I think maybe even Darius made the set. Because, like, Ricardo said Darius, like, always comes up with the sets and Ricardo makes them popular, something like that. I'm looking at you, Z Psychic, um, Z Psychic Gladius, the God, Oko, the Azumarill, and my, in my, one of our short on lives that I did with Padlab and Dennis. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty hyped for like the new megas to come out. Like Swampert, I think we get next week if I recall correctly. More hyped even for Lopony and Dianthi. Dianthi is gonna be busted though. Like I don't think there's a point in me narrating this. You guys can see what's going on. It's basically just ADF trying to like not give the Zard a DD or at least keep the Zard below 80% with Scald so Ducky can revenge it. But yeah, like Sun and Moon is like I don't want to say it's getting stale, but like the meta the way it is, it's kind of you forced to run certain sets like stuff like World Corona forces you to run a a Scarfer that is faster than 100 base speed. Then there's Stuff like Tangros that is just on almost every team because it's just so solid and checking Greninja and Tapu Koko and 
Zygarde, it's like one of the only Southern Arrows resist. Like, Southern, uh, Southern Arrows is a busted move. Like, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the meta game because there's not much, go not much going on in this game. Like, even NJMP is falling asleep already. Like, what is. Like. <laughs> this is not really interesting at all. So, yeah, the new meta megas are gonna always change it up a little bit. I mean, we got Heracross. It, it's definitely fun to use. I want to make another life with Heracross. With Houndoom, I have like done two lives, and in one life, I got hexed out and I got salty. And Houndoom actually killed the Toxic Packs. I was at plus two at two hit kill with Dark Pools, but yeah, of course, I get crit by Scald, so I die. Um, <laughs> I might still upload one of the two lives, but yeah. He finally switches out on the top of Fini. And he gets poisoned. I mean, in GNP, I know he has the rain teams ready, so I'm gonna hype for Swampert to come out. Oh yeah, we are getting Scepter, we're getting Tyranitar, we're getting Manectric. The Yenti and Lopani, I think we're getting a few weeks later, or like a month later. And yeah, my pizza is gonna be cold after this game is over. <laughs> like I can really understand, like I said earlier, like there's no really, po not really a point in forfeiting if let if you're Letna, because like you have to bank on your opponent messing up or on like, or you have to play the odds and get a potential crit on turn you near it or something. I just hope there's not, that there's not a second game starting anytime soon, so I can at least finish narrating this one as there's a. Nature's Madness miss, which is a bit annoying for Ladna. So but this, this Pex is kind of running out of recovery, it only has one left. It has Regenerator, but still. But yeah, he defaulted the T Spike away, but his Fini got poisoned and chipped a little bit already. And yeah, we are really close to reaching 100 subscribers, which is pretty hype. Even though the views are low at the moment, kind of, but that's all probably because people are not that interested in OUPL and. I know a lot of people um, are just interested in tournaments that matter a lot. As Earthquake doesn't do much to Zard because Grassy Terrain is up. So like I know that with World Cup the views are hopefully gonna go up. and I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys a good World Cup coverage. I'm pretty hyped for World Cup. I have never really followed World Cup. Like last, last SPL, th this year's SPL was like the first SPL that I really followed. Other than that, I, like before I just watched one or two games and I didn't really know how SPL worked. I just watched one or two games on Blunder or Ames channel. But it's actually really hype to like follow a complete tournament and narrate all these games and then like after a while you know how these people play, what they prefer. And you also get to meet some, like, know some people. Yeah, um, uh, most of the time I link my Discord down below. We made a monster Discord where we can, like, chill around, build. Um, sometimes we are on call, just listen to music. Like, we got, like, <clears throat> we got, like, all sorts of people there. My man BTB is like the most active person there, even though he has exams at the moment. Like this boy is like a god, he's holding it together. Shoutouts to BTB. Um, you guys can check out his Circle Jerk uploads that he did on my channel. Yeah, like I kind of gave up not rating this game because I'm like tired of it and we, we are about to reach turn 100. So like what I was trying to say, I can understand OUPL is like not a tournament that matters that much. So I can understand why the views are kind of low at the moment. But the main thing that I always have to, that I always want to keep in mind, I want to like focus on my narration being good most of the time. I know I cannot always do that because sometimes I record like 10 games in a row and I'm tired. Not at the moment, I don't do that at the moment, but I used to do that sometimes when I did SPL. Or just when I sometimes when I record at like 4 a.m. <laughs> it's obvious that I can always bring the best narration. So yeah, please forgive me if I do make a mistake here and there. But yeah, what I was trying to say is 
I enjoy narrating these games usually, and I don't really care if it gets like that many views or if it only gets a few views. So like, like I only have a few subscribers. It's not like I make much money from YouTube at the moment. Like, you guys might know about this that YouTube has lost a lot of sponsors. Like a lot of. Um, Sponsors has uh, they have stopped putting the money into YouTube, so it's like hard for YouTubers to make. But I, that's like a different topic. Um, just talking about random stuff because this game is not really interesting for me. Yeah, so if you guys, you guys get the point, right? This is a, like, if it's not a stall game like this, I enjoy YouTube a lot, and I just love bringing you guys the coverage, and it also makes me, like, puts a smile on my face when I see that, like, some people that have to be at work or are busy at that time that the match is, and then they say, like, or, or some people even told me that they, they can get some more sleep because I upload the SPL games, like, that's really nice to see, or, like, here, and, like, I'll... Like sometimes I get some like really cool comments with like like nice feedback. And I also don't mind um constructive criticism. I know that I sometimes mess up some turns and I've realized too that replays are not really that that they're not really that interesting only for the viewers. I also don't really enjoy an narrating replays unless it's like unless it's like a game that I was really hyped for from like a good player. Or like a game that I saw on my phone and I just couldn't record it live because I was outside or something. And I thought the game was really good and then then I would still narrate the replay. But if I like... It felt just kind of forced to record replays to like get all these OUPL games. I will just... Most of the time I will just bring you the games that I'm going to be able to get live for you guys. Because that's more interesting to watch. Especially if it's not... Stall like this game. But yeah. Did I forgot anything else? Um, I kind of wanted to rumble about something else. But yeah, we can check the PP and what is going on. So the packs only have five hazes left and no recovers. But Zard also has like no DDs and no roosts left. But yeah, pretty smart play that calling out another ha another haze. Because if he can get up a DD and kill the Toxa packs. Keep his out at a healthy amount, he can potentially win. Yeah, Skarmory showed rocks and ruse, they didn't show defog. And what is the last move? But if it doesn't have Brave Bird or Whirlwind, this Boo can actually put in some work here because it's SDing up. Walk around, I think, four times resists grass, so it's still gonna eat um, the Horn Leech up like it's nothing. And the Boo can also potentially burn itself. Does not burn itself there. <laughs> and JMP said, Jesus, he's getting tired of this game. <laughs> I mean, I can understand that. Oh, he, oh, what the fuck? Never mind, he got, there's the burn. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, he flamed, he only leached again and got burned this time. And there's a critical hit that spats up the game. That sucks, because, like... I think the vocal one would have had sped the Fini anyway into it, killed it. So I don't think that crit mattered. But yeah, that, that hex shouldn't matter, it just speeds up the process. So I guess I have to be a bit grateful for that because I don't want to watch anymore. <laughs> yeah, just haze spam and no Dragon Dance is left soon. Two DDs left, three haze is left. And only one roost or is it zero roost left after this turn? Yeah, one roost left. Yeah, this game is over. He can't even go for burn because Misty Terrain was still up. Yeah, yeah, someone made a comment about that. Um, in that one replay, that I recorded like at two in the night, and I forgot to mention that like Misty Terrain was up one turn, and I was like saying that it was potential freeze, but like yeah, obviously you can't freeze a Misty Terrain. And another thing is that um, yeah, he. He mentioned something else, which is like a mon that switches out first is 
and if both mons switch out, the mon that switches out first is faster. And that is, yeah, that is important, but I didn't really think about mentioning that, because, like, for me, that's something that's so obvious, I didn't even mention that, but yeah, if I have, like, newer mirrors, I guess I should mention that. It was like, if, like, Greninja switches out after Tapu Bulu, that would confirm that Tapu Bulu would be Scarf, Greninja's not Scarf. Stuff like that is just always nice to mention, I guess, for newer viewers, so yeah, shoutouts to you. I think Roboport made that comment. My bad if you didn't wanna have your <laughs> if you didn't wanna have your account revealed. Um, I'm actually not sure if it was Royal Poke, but I think So yeah, I appreciate the constructive criticism criticism my man and I mean I know I know that I will mistakes again obviously in the future because I'm like Oh we finally got a kill on the packs. Like I know that I make mistakes, especially when I record a lot of games in a row. Or when I'm gonna be tired, or just record a game immediately after I wake up, because I want to bring you guys as like a specific World Cup game. I'm gonna be actually trying to get to. I think it's five World Cup, uh, five Sun and Moon slots this year in World Cup, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But if that's true, that's gonna be hype. I think we should get some more Mega till World Cup comes out, so that's super interesting then. And I know a lot of people are saving their godlike teams for World Cup or like their f like teams that they just haven't revealed yet. So we are going to see some new flames. I assume we are also going to see some new wild stall teams that people come up with. Like some new semi stall. But hopefully not too too much. And hopefully Batompas will get banned before World Cup. And if not... If not we have to deal with it and <laughs> we will see what happens. Yeah so Latna finally got a kill on the packs. And AF decides that he wants, or she wants to keep the sash on Dagi intact and go to Sailor instead, which is a bit odd. But yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad because like when I talk for a while, like my voice comes to an end after a while, and I want to record more games today. So I kind of want to save some of my voice. I don't want to waste all for the stall games. Like, I mean, I already decided to record, so I'm not gonna just like end my recording in the middle and skip to the end. I mean, I'm already 42 minutes in and turn 128, so I'm gonna finish this now. I don't really understand what what was the purpose of going Sableye. That was a bit weird. Oh, it only has Flabbits left, so that's to get more Flabbits recoil. Uh, that's weird. What do you need Dagi Sash for at this point in time? Like, Volcarona plus Tangros should be able to beat the Majorna, so I don't think you need Dagi Sash for that. Um, that's a bit weird, I'm not really sure why Sableye was the play. But yeah, Letna only has Flabbits and Dragonclaw left. He doesn't have Roos left. Maybe it's foul play Sableye. Why would you protect? Hmm. I mean, yeah, it wastes the PP, but like... I mean, yeah, it doesn't make a difference if he DD'd it again or not. Yeah, not really sure what was the purpose of second Sableye. Because, um. like, you still have to go Dagi anyway. Or you can go... Um, does it, what the fuck? I'm so confused. So she wants to keep the sash on Dagi for something. I don't understand why. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something here because this game is confusing me. Does the Dagi not have earthquake? Oh, the Dagi! I understand it. The Dagi is probably Z move, so it's not sash. The Dagi is probably Z move, so Zard. Oh my lord, Lana can actually win. What the fuck? So he's like has to kill us with recoil. What? <laughs> and MP is putting question mark. This is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the Dagi is like Z fly to kill Heracross. I actually made a team like that with the Jack Button packs and then Z Dagi, um, Aerial AC, Supersonic Sky Strike to kill Mega Heracross. Like I'm pretty sure it has to be um, non sash Dagi the way this has been played. And <laughs> this is funny, NJMP dropping them question marks. But yeah, Flabbit's recall, um, Drangle doesn't kill this. 
Dragon Claw does like. Hmm. Dude, if Latna had any roots left, he could have won. Like he could have roosted on a Skamri on the Volk or something if he had them left. Good lord, man. I thought this game was over the entire time, but it's not Sesh Dagi. Unless. Like, it has to be non Sesh Dagi, otherwise, he would have gone to Dagi like ages ago. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So now, not the DM on the Sabre Protect actually kind of mattered, but. If you're Latna, I can completely understand why he just attacked the Sable, like, because it could potentially be foul play. Or he, don't, he doesn't have any roots left, so like if you don't attack and you take more knockoff damage, you're also getting put lower anyway. So yeah, I can completely get behind that. But yeah, he's, there's finally a, some hope for Latna. So Duck Geo gets sacked off. So the Zard, <laughs> if the Skarmory doesn't have counter, but it's the last move if it's not counter, if it's Brave Bird. Magina cannot win because it gets walled by those two still, like yet. Yeah, yeah, I can understand why, like, yeah, yeah, keeping the Skarmory is to wall Landris, I guess. Hmm. Dang it, dude. If Latna still had the roots left, he would have won here. Like, all of a sudden, I see the. see his light chance for Latna, but I think he still loses. <laughs> I mean, I can completely understand why you would run Supersonic Sky Strike on Dagi. If it's not that sad, um. It could be Z Ground, but I think it has to be Supersonic Sky Strike. This team is kind of weak to Sable, uh, to Mega Hera Cross. It's like not super weak, but kind of. And it's one of the Megas that just came out, so we we'll definitely see why you would want to prepare for that. Man, I'm actually gonna look at my Discord on my phone and see what people, if people on my Discord are watching this game. <laughs> Yeah, that's the Skarmory, it goes down to Sturdy to the Flare Blitz, and Zard kills itself, and it shows counter. But yeah, Landris, if it has, and <laughs> JMP said who, Landris if it has, um, it can go for U-turn here, pick off the Skarm or get something else in. If Landris um, has Fly, it couldn't win here, but it doesn't, it's just leftovers. <laughs> Why does, <laughs> yo, does every turn require your commentary? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I was typing to my man, sorry. I, f I stopped narrating. I still think that uh, Tangus plus Volcarona wins the game for ADF. <laughs> yeah, it does. And now Blender said you can read it yourself. <laughs> let me t let me type to my man. I'm recording for forty eight minutes. Like it's not that hard to think here. Like I don't know why they're taking so long. If Lena had Stonehenge on his bully, he actually had this game, man. Okay, so it's Hidden Power Icelanders, I assume. It was not resisted, so it's not Hidden Power Flying. Even Hidden Power Flying wouldn't do much to Tangrus anyway, and to Volk after equivalence. Yeah, one question, why you didn't scout Stone Age Bulu? Exactly, that's what I'm wondering too earlier.
There's a lot of questions to this game, I agree with NJMP kinda. <laughs> Holy shit, don't go, don't... Yeah, yeah, one time, one time ADF didn't scud. I don't know where Blunder met. I mean... Yeah, yeah, at the beginning I don't think ADF scouted for Stone Edge. But I'm not gonna make it make me make myself rewatch those turns. <laughs> Finish out the game we can discuss afterwards. I mean like The short HBI's you turn off Greg and the last move has to be rocks. So War Corona should win here with a quiver dance. Well, Corona should win you with a Quiver Dance, but if you want to play it safe, you just go to Tangros and click Hidden Power Eyes slash Knock Off slash Giga Drain slash Leaf Storm. Like, probably not Knock Off because you don't. Actually, this is Leftovers. This doesn't have Helmet. Never mind. You, you either go to Tangros and click Giga Drain or HP Eyes or Leaf Storm, whatever you have. I think it has Leaf Storm on this team, or you go to this and Quiver Dance. Like, it's not that hard. Like, just make your turn, please. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but like I'm kind of getting annoyed because it's 51 minutes here. I mean, I decided to record this game, but you guys can understand, right? I record this entire thing. I'm not just going to not upload it now. I know some people don't like to watch this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they're taking so long. Yeah, it decides to make the Volcarona play. So if this is a random Stone Edge Landris, I will laugh my ass off. I mean, I can understand, like I said, that you want to end you want to end off the game here with a Quiver Dance, and it has to be Rocks in the last slot. Unless he was Rocks on the hill ago. Show me the random Stone Edge. Like, I, there's no way he has it, but like, show me the random Stone Edge for the lols. Nah, it's 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 fine. He doesn't have Stone Edge. It's okay. Okay, okay. Doesn't even cool it ends up. Just flamethrower to it kills the landers. Okay. Yeah, the roost will come out on the Majorna or on the Bulu afterwards. Actually, on the Bulu, you don't even have to roost because it's like burn, it can't do anything. But on Majorna, you can roost to prevent getting picked off by some random crit. But yeah, the flamethrower is going to come out again, obviously. Pick off the Landorus, and the yeah, AF is going to win this 2 0. Yeah, congrats to ADF. I don't know. I got kind of salty. Actually, I didn't get really salty. Kind of annoyed. Like the only thing that has is like Volt Switch Floor can Flash can and maybe hidden power, maybe something like yeah. That's the crow end. And then you just click flamethrower slash roost. If you wanna play it super extra safe, you can click roost, but you don't have to. Flamso doesn't even kill AV Majorna showing the, its bulk. Crit might have killed there, probably not. Would have come close to kill. But yeah, 2 0 victory. But yeah, like I said earlier, I think it has to be non Sash Duggy. Even though I was going out of it being Sash Duggy for the entire time earlier. Yeah, I don't really want to talk anymore. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we, we can look at the score though. That is one thing that we can do. As Gypsy DJ won and this is a three and oh three and one Empo Hex to win. I don't want to say it mattered, but because I didn't see the game that much, I just skipped to the replay. Three and two, five and two. So the BBC Kings coached by Maddie Brolic or managed by Maddie Brolic and Obi win this week already. So 
Pocket is GG game as a game is not gonna matter, but um, I hope he got something for top two, but I hope he can pick up the win still. And yeah, I'm looking to see if I can record Chrome versus Lighthouses and Gondor versus Ricardo. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Other than that, we have Theme versus Pearl and Scan versus Roses. We will see. Henry versus Shell Shadow, maybe. Maybe if I'll, I'll try to catch that too. Thank you guys for watching. If you. You thought the entire thing, big props to you, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, I wanna eat my pizza now. Goodbye, friends. Why the fuck was that intro so, outro so weird? Bye.